Uh, turn with me today to the fifth chapter of, amen, the gospel according to St. Matthew. And on last week, the Lord reminded me that I did not finish the text. And so today, I'm going to change the subject just a little bit. Last week, we talked about living without the glory of God and how in our lives that we can live in such a way that we do not glorify God. And Jesus makes it plain that in living our lives, we have to keep our minds, our hearts, and our eyes in place because you can look and lust and not live a life that glorifies God. It makes it very, very plain. Your hands can get in the way. And you can live a life that you will not glorify God. And he says it's easier. It's easier for a man to cut off everything and enter into heaven maimed than to go into hell whole. And a lot of folk don't think that's a literal statement. But I think Jesus was very, very serious about his intention to get everybody in heaven compared to folk going to hell. Amen? Amen. You do anything within our power if we knew what heaven was like to get there. We would do anything within our power to keep us from going to hell if we really knew what hell was going to be like. And a lot of folk have taken that text and said, Jesus really didn't mean it, so the Bible is not true. And so because he would say something like that, he doesn't hold us to it. Well, I'm a firm believer that he wants you to get your heart right first. Get your heart right. Let your heart control your eyes. Let your heart control your hands, your ears. Yeah, let it control your life so that you live right first. And then if you can't get your heart right and you're on your way to hell, you need to do whatever is necessary to make heaven your eternal home. I believe it's a literal statement. And I go against all of my teachers and theologians because I don't believe Jesus said anything that he did not mean. And then he goes on to say, beginning at verse 31, he said, it has been said, furthermore, it has been said, Whosoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that whosoever divorces his wife for any reason, except for sexual immorality, causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever marries a woman who is divorced, commits Adultery. Take your neighbor by the hand, look your neighbor in the eye and say, neighbor, neighbor. Living, with living with or without, or without. The, glory the glory of God, adultery, adultery. and marriage. Amen. That's what I'm going to talk to y'all about today. That's what I'm going to talk about today. Amen. I ain't running from it. A lot of folk run from it. Don't want to talk about it. But anything that's right here in the text, all of us ought to be willing to deal with in the midst of our lives. Jesus, right out of the bat, right in his first sermon, in the beginning of his ministry, does not run from the difficulties of life. And in this statement, he defines what the true glory of life is really all about. 
for God's people. When you really stop to think about it, it is in the marriage institution that God receives great glory because marriage ought to be to the glory of God. When God had made everything in the book of Genesis, the first thing he did was to make a man and a woman and put them together. After he created all the trees and everything that man and woman would need to live by, the first thing he does is he makes Adam, and he said it's not good that Adam should be alone. He said, I'll make him a helpmate. And he made woman, put Adam to sleep, took one of his ribs, formed the woman from a rib so that they might be of the same source, the same substance, the same flesh, so that they may become one flesh in life. And God made woman, put man and woman together, and he intended for them Amen. Once they got together to stay together. Look at somebody and say, stay together. Stay together. Amen. Y'all remember that old song? <laughs> Let's stay together. President Barack Obama sang it every now and then. He'd get happy. Start thinking about Michelle. Amen. He wasn't thinking about Michelle when he sang it. He was thinking about America. He, he wanted to stay in there as president. But staying together is what God intended for men and women to do once they joined together in holy matrimony. It is the family that defines what the world will be like. If the family is torn down and broken apart, the world is in trouble, y'all. Jesus, in his particular day, deals with the issue of divorce and remarriage. And he breaks it down from the standpoint of whether it pleases God or displeases God, but why how we are married or not. You know, you do know that the marriage institution first of all, does not represent man and woman. First of all, it represents the relationship of God and Israel. Israel being the bride of God. God deciding I'm going to have a holy people and I choose Israel and the relationship that he develops with Israel is based upon the relationship of marriage. And then second, he says that the relationship of Christ and the church is based upon the relationship of marriage. By the mere fact that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God said, look, I'm going to establish my church and in establishing my church, it will be based upon a marriage relationship with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who does everything to make the church what it ought to be. When the church is right with Christ, it gives God the glory. When Israel is right with God, it gives God the glory. When man is right with woman and woman is right with man, it gives God the glory. And so our marriages in life are intended to first of all represent the fact that the devil is a liar. When the devil tried to get Eve and Adam to sin and cause them to sin and fall from the garden, he said, oh, I got this thing now. I'm going to tear it up. Mankind has fallen. But when man and woman stay together in a married relationship, it glorifies God and it calls the devil a liar. 
Somebody ought to say amen in here today.